I've been investigating the unknown for years, going on paranormal investigations across the globe, searching for answers to life's toughest and darkest questions. I've visited many haunted prisons during my paranormal journey, and some have been darker, more haunted, more violent than others. But the Nevada State Prison in Carson City, Nevada, was a place that I'll never forget not only because of the violent poltergeist activity we experienced that night, but because of what took me over while I was inside of the building. This night will live on in infamy forever. How you doing? My name's Chris. Welcome to Nevada State Prison. In 1976, there was one of the biggest riots. Harold and Ralph, they did die right here. They are here. Beware of ghosts. There's a reason why we have this. There's a murder here. The gentleman that was in this cell ended up bleeding out right here. These are all the guys that were gas. I think, honestly, we have ever done a place that is haunted by ghosts and aliens. And women and children and blobs and shadows and skinwalkers. We got it all. On tonight's episode, we're at one of the most haunted prisons in all of America. There's something bad here. They killed me. This is evil. Injected. Oh, it's fucking warning us. Are you trying to back Colin right now? This is scarier than Brushy. This is scarier than Missouri. On tonight's episode of The Paranormal Files, we're at one of the most haunted prisons in all of America, the Old Nevada State Prison. This prison has some of the darkest history we've ever encountered. There were murders, there were suicides. And deep inside one of these buildings lies the infamous death chamber where over 50 people were put to death. So join us tonight as we dive deep into this extremely dark and disturbing investigation in Nevada's most haunted property. I'm Colin Brown, and you're watching The Paranormal Files. Okay guys, right now we are in Carson City, Nevada, and we are headed to one of the most haunted prisons in all of America. Ooh. And it's right there, baby. The old Nevada State Prison. That is massive, dude. This place is like not very, like, I mean, it's an old prison, but I mean, it just went out of like commission not too long 2012 ago. 2012 yeah. is when it sh officially shut down. About the same time as uh, Crescent. Yeah, I've heard a lot of different things from this place. People that I know that have visited. Omar Gosh, Omar says that this is one of the scariest places he's ever been to. Even today, the people that we're meeting that are gonna give us the tour have been saying that the spirits are already active. They're moving things, they're yelling at them. Holy f I don't know why we keep doing these prisons, man. They are terrifying every single time. The energy is nothing but dark. I mean, like, Jesus Christ. It's I'll tell massive. you why we have to keep doing them. Cause these guys <laughs> like them too much. Yeah, you guys <laughs> love the prisons. So here we are. Yeah. Going to prison again, baby. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm I'm excited and a little bit freaked out for this one. Okay. Just, I mean, executions, murders, it's torture, lobotomies. This prison's history is, I think, the darkest personally that we've ever dived into. Without further ado, I say we check ourselves into jail. How did you check yourself into jail? <laughs> well, that's what we're gonna do tonight. Let's go commit a felony and then we go to jail. <laughs> yeah, quick felony before the video shoot. Yeah. Who's down? We do it for you guys. Yeah, it's all for you. <laughs> okay. It's all for you, guys. <laughs> okay, let's do this, man. Boom. So with every single prison that we investigate, we go into it knowing that there's gonna be a dark energy. But with Nevada State Prison, this dark energy was darker than what we've ever encountered. I'm pretty sure that in this video, the spirit of a killer, a possible serial killer, tried to enter my body. And you're gonna see that in the footage. I mean, the end of this video is like the climax to a horror movie that has no resolution. It's terrifying. This changed fundamentally the way I look at all this stuff, and I'm gonna talk about that at the very end. But definitely looking back at it, we were not prepared that day for what we were about to go up against. So after Missouri State Penitentiary, uh, 
it being my first prison that I had done an investigation at, uh, I didn't know how much creepier a prison could get until this night at the Nevada State Penitentiary. You're gonna see in this video that there's something in the Nevada State Penitentiary that is just downright scary. So first, as always guys, once we got to the prison, we had to meet with the local teams, the building managers, everybody there, and learn the history of the building. And this is some of the most interesting history we've ever learned about. There's violence, there's riots, there's shootouts, and obviously there are serial killers and executions. So, yeah, buckle in because this history is disturbing, it's dark, and it's very, very compelling. How you doing? My name's Chris. Welcome to Nevada State Prison. Uh, basically, the Nevada State Prison in this area, Nevada was a territory back in the 1860s. Uh, in around 1860, a gentleman by the name of Abe Curry built a hotel in this general location. And the hotel was a sight to see. People would come from everywhere in this territory of Nevada. In around 1862 or so, the territory of Nevada decided they needed to house prisoners. Because back then, I imagine their federal law enforcement would arrest prisoners, but have nowhere to take them. So they started leasing land from Abe Curry in the hotel. And they were actually housing inmates in the hotel. And obviously housing inmates in a hotel is bad for business. So the state was able to procure the prison. They decided that there was some kind of conflict between who owns that area. And ultimately there was a settlement reached where the state of Nevada now and the legislature in the state acquired the prison. And they started building this. This uh, stone was quarried from behind the wall here. Uh, there's a stone quarry in there. And at the time this was level ground with stone. They quarried all these stones and made all these buildings that are in Carson City, this prison, the assembly, the governor's mansion, all these different buildings. The Nevada State Prison started operating. Marshals would come from everywhere and they would bring their inmates to the prison that would house many different types of inmates. Local crimes, those inmates are here. Federal, everybody was coming here because back in the day, this was the only lockup there was. Once the inmates came in here, the prison started getting overwhelmed. They started filling up to capacity, which was very small, and they started to grow the prison. So the prison patchwork grew until there were many wings, there was multiple areas for inmates, and when you have more than one inmate, you're going to have to start keeping them busy. And that that's where they came up with the mining of the, the stone. So just so we have a frame of reference, the there's a northeast marker on this end of the prison building right here. Uh, we do believe that was the hotel itself in that area. Underneath the ground, there's geothermal activity, heating those springs and, and the water over here. The hotel was able to capitalize on that. They made baths, they made social events, things like that. If you guys want to step into the prison, I'd love to start taking you on the tour of the inside. I don't see why not. Let's do it. <laughs> cool, man. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> And where's the, just so I can get a shot of it, the foundation? So, so back in the day, masonry was fairly popular. And masons have a way of building things. North and east are popular in masonry. So in construction back then, the northeast corner of a building would be the, the foundation and the starting point for construction of buildings stone buildings and that was in this area right here where this nail is in the ground they call it a marker and that marks the northeast corner of the beginning of that project so it went from here and then expanded into that and so back in the day the wagons or whoever would come in here they'd bring the prisoners through the streets because or the road the dirt roads there was none of the fencing. The street was right there or the roadway. They'd come in here, they'd wagon them over to that area right there where it says courthouse, there's an arch there. And that's where they would intake the prisoners. There was never a roof on that area, it was just a wall. You'd go through there, you'd be checked into the prison and you'd go right into the prison yard. 
and they came in through that area over there. Wow. Right there. So at some point during the life of the prison, the warden started being chosen by the governor. And the governor, it was a privilege to be the warden. For quite a while, the lieutenant governor was the warden. And if you held the position of lieutenant governor, you were also the Nevada State Prison Warden. That house right there is where the warden lives. That's the warden's house. Currently, that's a shell. There's nothing much in there, maybe some timbers. But at some point, I think the Preservation Society wants to rebuild it. Certainly looks creepy. Oh, like yeah. That, with all the sealed up windows. You don't like spiders, don't go in there. Sp <laughs> spiders are in there. Well, I am going to steer yeah, clear of that. Off the limits day. for this no, guy. Thank you. Okay, let's head on in. Situations that happen in different spots. Perfect. So we'll just walk outside here and uh, I have somebody to introduce you to. Okay. Susan, look who's here. Hey. Colin, hey! It's Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Welcome to NSP. I've been wanting you to come out here for a long time. Well, we're finally here. Good. And, uh, yeah, I haven't even been out. I came out and looked at this. I mean, yeah, this is wild. How insane is this? <laughs> this is huge. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of history here, you guys. And these are my good friends. So got Michelle, Aaron, <laughs> and Tammy Benjamin. Thank you. <laughs> They're docents as well as Chris, but boy, do we have history here and a lot more to tell you about paranormal. Are you ready for the history? I'm ready. Always ready. We're never not ready for history. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start this way. As you see, you guys, we do have a cave over here. A lot of people say that that cave was used for Eugene Austin, who was a Native American. However, he didn't stay in this cave, but maybe the one behind it. The reason why he stayed there is because he was up in the cell house and he would throw his feces, he'd pee on everything, he'd throw his food. They could not keep him under control. So what they did is took him and put him in the cave. He sat in there for seven years. He did go blind, but he's the only one that had a lobotomy. So he spent 33 years here, you guys, 33 years, the longest living prisoner to be in NSP. After the lobotomy, they sent him to California and that's where he died. People say, so is that haunted? No, it's not. He, I think had some mental issues. Um, when he killed his own Native Americans, they had no other idea what to do with him, but send him here. And unfortunately, it wasn't a good place. Next, are you ready for the culinary? Yeah. All right. So Colin, I don't know if you want this now, maybe later, but Michelle saw that amber light come out of this and go up. Yeah. Right I mean, here. You want to Can you tell that right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was investigating the culinary with my friend, Aaron, and we got crazy activity immediately when we went in there. And uh, we, you know, let's go do something else. So we wanted to go somewhere else because we wanted to go check out the other places. And I opened that door over there and I walked out and exactly right here. Have you ever seen Star Trek? Yeah. You know, the beam me up Scotty oh, shit? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a gold amber tube and it shot straight up right in this area. And then I'm like, oh my God, I have to get a, you know, I went to go take a picture and it dissipated. It disappeared. Wow. Never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah, what do you think that was? I think it was extraterrestrial. So. I really do. I mean, I've seen a lot of things, and this is something that I, I questioned. You know, it's not ghosts, not spirits. It's extraterrestrial. Even different energies, I've felt that. I mean, wow. obviously, there's no lights or yeah, anything that would come straight down. It was down. dark outside, and it lit this whole area. I was like... Oh my God, oh, I thought I was like going to heaven or something, you know? I was like, what the hell, am I gonna die or what is this? And then but yeah. Like, because you're trying to take a picture instead of getting into the yeah, light. Like, hey, yeah. She's like, oh my God, my friend Aaron's like, oh my God, what is that? She's like, that, we're like this, and I whipped my phone and it's gone. Yeah. It was yeah. freaking yeah, gone. I don't think I've ever seen something like that. Oh, I've seen some crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. a perfect introduction to the building. Right? <laughs> 
So this is the culinary, you guys. In 1976, there was one of the biggest riots here, okay? You had the whites with your Native Americans with African Americans. Unfortunately, you had the whites and the natives against African Americans. What happened in here changed a lot of lives. We had 12 of your African Americans get hurt, but two died, Harold and Ralph. Let me show you. If you guys look here, this post was put up with a CO. You see these little slots here? This is where he was able to put his gun out. If there were any problems going up this way or that way, um, he would be in here. He would actually get in here from the roof and sit in here. And also he could watch the culinary. Interesting. Now, in 1976, you guys, when there was a riot, these cages were not here. After the riot, they had to put these cages up, and the reason why is because, again, you have a lot of inmates on inmates. You had your African Americans against whites, you had the Indians against the African Americans, Mexicans. So what they did is they built two cages so when they come to lunch, they come down that road, get their lunch. If you were white, you'd sit on this side. If you were African American, you'd sit on that side. And hopefully nobody would get in a fight and hurt each other. So this room feels definitely heavy. Oh, you wait. <laughs> this is where Omar couldn't leave. Oh. So actually, Harold and Ralph, they did bleed out here. They did die right here. As of paranormal, you guys, they are here. They're with me all the time. When I'm in here, I was shooting with uh, another show, and the producer stood up, and cold air came out of his mouth, and he goes, what's going on? I, and I started crying. And the reason why is because I could feel them hugging me. They didn't know what these bright lights were. And I said, they're here. And he said, I've never experienced this. So we've had a lot of shows here experience this. This is another cage where your CO would sit. Again, you do have slots in there for his gun, but he would be watching the inmates as well as that CO. Paranormal, you guys, we get stuff in here too. Faces, um, in the back I've got pictures of an alien. Really? Oh, yeah. An alien in the back of this building. Oh, yeah. In this building. This is the back of the kitchen. So this is where your workers would be and everything. And for some reason, the spirits love it back here. So let's come on in. Right here is where we've had a lot of people saying there's a portal. And we had people standing here to where you can feel the a wind just going around you and around you and these people were deaf and they're kind of flagging us going and texting us going portal portal and sure enough we all walked into it and it was going like wind around us kind of smell in here. yeah it always yeah. changes too huh pins yeah. one thing that happened with that portal too is if you got into the portal there was no sounds no echoes nothing it was dead flat sound but when you stepped out, it was this echoey stuff. Right here. Very, so, very cool. What I had done back here is where you would have your guy sit who works the line, right? So myself and Jackie, we sat back here. Me and her were the only ones in here. And we're sitting here. And she's got a recorder going. And all of a sudden, I hear like 20 guys running up on us. And Jackie jumps up and goes, oh my God, who's that? She actually thought someone broke out next door and was in here. I told her, it's the spirits. And she goes, well, let's play my recorder. So we listened to her recorder and it says, if we do this, we'll scare them. So <laughs> this is what they do. They mess with you. And when Omar was here, he constantly could hear people running up on top. He thought there's two stories. No. There's a roof up there. Nobody can get up there. And you might hear that as well. So just so you know, we have an active prison next door. 
And at the time when Jackie and I were sitting here and we were doing EVPs and things, all of a sudden we heard like 20 guys run up on us and her recorder she had going, she goes, let's listen, because she was so freaked out, she figured someone broke out and they were in here. Well, actually, no, it was our spirits. So we played her recorder and it said, if we do this, we'll scare them. Also, Pitts and I are both witnesses to this. Come here, Pitts. Let's show them about the spoon. So Susan, let's show them. Huh? Have a seat. We'll show them first. Okay. Susan and I were sitting here and we were just talking in the black dark. It was just dark in here. And we were talking and talking and talking. And Susan set a spoon right here. And it was laying there. We left. Nothing remarkable. There was a, how do you say it? Two elderly women. Two elderly women that were in the culinary investigating. And we closed down for the night at like one in the morning. And we came to retrieve the spoon. And when we got in here, the spoon was twisted and bent. Tweaked up. What? Yeah. yeah. So we asked the ladies, you know, thanks for wrecking the spoon, and they're like, we didn't do that. Well, they thought we did it, and we said, we didn't do it. So today, to this day, we still don't know what happened to that spoon. Like, you, it was like... It was bent. bent. It was bent up. It was bent in half. And I, I can't even bend it. It's that tough of a spoon. Yeah. It's a big spoon. And I do have it, and I'll have to show you guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Because I was like, how does, how does the elderly, elderly ladies bend the spoon like that? I couldn't even do it. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay. So this thing has a lot of power. A lot of Whatever energy. did that. Yes. That's crazy. Oh, we were very shocked. Um, I think I would definitely be too. <laughs> Kitchen. Yeah, this is the big kitchen. So when you had your prisoners working in here, of course, no one knew who was back here serving their food. If you look over here, there's a slot. And that slot didn't allow them to see who's serving them, right? They, all they'd see is from here down. So those guys were able to feed them because you didn't know who hated who in here, correct? So, for some reason, this is so haunted in here. Again, we usually come over here and we'll kind of play a game with our spirits. And one night we were in here and I had my music box out there and we go, okay guys, come on, knock. Sometimes they knock back twice, but the music box went Ding, ding. <laughs> and we have that on video. Wow. So it's crazy, but they interact with you. So what's that tell you? They're very intelligent in here. Yeah, I always get like a ring in my ear. When they're around. Yeah, and I just got it right after you knock. But in my, it's always in my left ear. They're, they're here. here. Yeah, they're definitely here. It's now, creepy. Oh, don't God. film this yet. Let me get the picture up. Um, Is that blood? Where? Right here? Oh, yeah. Yep. You know what that's from? Probably when they left. Yeah. It was their blood. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, we, when they left, they just got up and walked out. Let me see if I got the picture. I know I have the picture of the alien. I have to find it. If I fucking am walking around here and I see an alien like in signs, Walk across the floor, dude. I'm right. Yeah, so I'm getting out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I want to. Jesus. Yeah, that's not happening. So this is our knock knock game with the music box. <laughs> is that crazy <laughs> so we're taking pictures right and i always hear take a picture so when i hear that it start taking pictures so when i took this picture we're walking out and 
take a picture, take a picture. So see that right there, that freezer window right there? Yeah. yeah. That's a gray, and I'll show you what he oh, is. God. I'm gonna show you what he is. That's him. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. I don't wanna see that there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something. When Omar was here, he sat here going something was walking like back and forth, back and forth, and he says for some reason he thought it was an alien. It was not a spirit. I don't think, honestly, we have ever done a place that is haunted by ghosts and aliens. And women and children yeah. and blobs and shadows and skinwalkers. We got it all. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> You'll be screaming, I'm right, telling oh, you. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. So two people died in the ride here? Yeah, actually, um, Harold and Ralph. And they're good souls, you know, they, they just hang out. And then we also have Daryl. Daryl is the one that was executed uh, with lethal injection on April 26th of 2006. Oh, shit. That's he, was, he was the last one. But I was in the back and I kept saying, you know, someone's on my left side and Chris is throwing his recorder and he goes, let me record. And then we get Daryl. And I know it's him. And he has been seen in here with Kelsey. Oh, Wait. yeah, for Omar's. Yeah. yeah. Also, Omar got pushed right here. Yeah, this, she's, I mean, so also, why it was just to get this back? Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. It was a race riot? A race riot. Oh, so yeah. It's like kind of racial violence. Exactly. You had that all the time, racial violence. You know, you have a bunch of men in here, different races, and they hate each other, you know? I yeah. mean, unfortunately, they can't get along, but once you get them grouping together, like I said, with Native Americans and the white men, and they went after your African Americans, and 12 of them, they actually were stabbing and hurting, but they killed two of them. I mean, that's sad, you know? And after that, you know, it kind of opened everybody's eyes. Guess what? We got to separate these guys now. That's wild. So they actually segregated oh, yeah. the housing and stuff then? They had to, yeah. Wow. So as we're walking up, Chris, do you want to talk about the shootout in here? Sure. Because he, it's better to have a guy talk about the shootout in here than me. I'm going to let him talk. Go oh, for it. Time? Yep. All right, so in here in this building, we have the infirmary upstairs. They've used these cells for a lot of different things. At one point, they did special therapeutic sessions with the inmates where these guys here would have dogs. And they were able to raise dogs and take the dogs and sell them or use them as service animals. So these fellas got to have an animal, get to know their animal, and you know give it away to somebody who needed a service animal. Pretty cool. They also had lifers in here, death row in here. This has been all kinds of things. Over here, we have one of the worst places in the prison to be if you're an inmate. This is the solitary confinement area. There was a stabbing right here, and an inmate was, was murdered right there. Wow. Uh, in this area, if you look into here, you'll see the solitary confinement cells. Now, over the years, back in the you know, 40s, 50s, inmates didn't have a lot of rights. So they would throw them in here, shut the doors, shut the lights, and leave them in there in the dark for days, weeks, months. So at some point, humanity came into question. So these doors were removed. But if you were an inmate prior to that, you got to get thrown in here if you were bad. And then the guards would slam you in there and leave you in the dark. They were 23 hours a day in here, and then they got to come out for one hour. The guards could come by and look at them, tease them, taunt them, 
or be nice to them if you're that kind of guard. Having light as part of life enrichment is required. So they came up with these doors right here, and they would put these over the doors. This does a couple of things. It allows light to come through, so the inmate has that. And it allowed the guards to walk by and not get feces and urine thrown on them, which they call gassing. And they would gas the guards when they would walk by. They fed them, if you lived here, a diet loaf. A diet loaf is basically a whole bunch of nutrients ground into a loaf, baked, no flavor, and you get to eat that. That's, so that's ground beef, cabbage, carrot, potato, beans in a loaf? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and if you've tried it, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's gnarly. Um, Honestly, in this area right here. That's pretty good. I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, there was a couple of inmates that were in this area, and they had dirty lawyers. And these guys wanted to get out of here. So they had their dirty lawyers bring them guns. The inmates acquired the firearms took a couple of guards hostage that were working in here, got their keys, got more firearms. Nothing of substantial worth, but handguns, stuff like that. The prison had it out with them for a while till they couldn't make it too much further. They called in the sheriff's office SWAT team. The sh sheriff's office SWAT team showed up with the rifles and they got into a shootout that engaged down the length of this hallway. If you look along these walls, you can see ricochet shots in the walls and windows. Oh, wow. I can't imagine how loud. I was just thinking. Well, that. you guys, I knew a CO, his name was Warren, mm -hmm. and he was one of the guys captive here. He said the guy walked up to him, put the gun to his forehead, and said, Warren, take your clothes off, because I'm putting them on. If you don't, I'm going to have to shoot you. And Warren told me, he said, I took my clothes off, gave it to him, and they shoved him in there. And then they had the shootout. It was crazy. So if you continue down here, a bullet hit a window here. They epoxy that. But as you get further down here, as bullets fly, they stop. Bullets have to go somewhere. And here's where you see where the bullets went. There's a rifle. Oh, wow. There's a shotgun slug or a rifle round. You can see handgun rounds. Oh my God. That is a lot of bullets. They even hit the ceiling, because guess what? They don't aim a lot, they just crank off rounds down the hallway. <laughs> but yeah, if you're in here shooting out in these concrete walls, it's loud. So how did it end? They gave up. The in nobody got hurt, nobody got hit, nobody got killed, and the inmates gave up because they knew they were in that loose. Nobody got hit? Nobody got hit. It's like stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. How did they miss all that machine gun fire? <laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's pretty really much that for this area. These are really long corridors, I have to say. So yeah, yeah. so in this building, this is this goes the whole length of the building. This area right here was a bullpen. It's been used for lots of different things. Inmates would get overflow from the jail. They'd end up here. They'd get um, shipments of inmates down up here from Las Vegas. They'd go in here to be processed and screened. So this area has been used for a lot of different stuff. The other building, on the first and second floor, the hallways are short, but on the third and fourth, they're very long and creepy. So and you're going to see. Guys, is the ones that were involved in that? Yeah. Yep. Squeaky Marshall. It's a pretty good name. He looks like a kid. And were these the sheriffs? Or was one of them? Oh, okay. Wow. Jeez, no. That's so we can head back in there if you guys want to. Yeah. Infirmaries are always very creepy. Yeah? We got a lot of good stuff out there. I couldn't believe how big this place was, but also at the same time how new some of the history was on it. I mean, deaths, murders, s. I mean, it had everything. Every inch of that place seems to be stained in blood, and you can feel it. Okay, the infirmary. Yep. If 
you're tall, watch your head. I think I'm just short. <laughs> and watch your step. Overall, just the history here, we do have investigators come in here. If you look behind you, we have a bunch of signatures. Those are all the people that have come here and helped us continue making NSP better. So with their donations, it's helping us put a roof on this place. Also over here, we have Aaron Saggers, Kalani, so I would love you to I would love you to sign this. <laughs> of course. Okay. So please sign do. It right now. Good. Okay. So the history in here, guys. This was I, I not like a doctor's office. So if someone was really shanked, they wouldn't be in here. They would take them to the main hospital. But if they had a cut or diabetic, we had one guy in here that actually went out in parts because his diabetes got so bad. So he lost a hand, lost a foot, and he did tell one of the CEOs, you watch, I'll, I'll go out of there in pieces, which he did and died. As far as paranormal, eh, off and on. Sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't. So with the hospital, it just kind of took care of your minor, you know, problems. They also took care of our maintenance things. So yeah. if you had an overweight inmate or an older inmate, they would administer medications. If you had inmates with mental health issues, they would administer mental health treatment and medications. Uh, they had different therapies in here. They'd ride bikes, they'd use a bath. They Therapy. would do different therapies. And that was all in this area. Is this where they would have performed the lobotomy? No, no. Um, actually, the lobotomy, if you look at it, it's on our website. Okay, it's under Eugene Austin. You can find it on YouTube. And it shows him in a room. And we, we're not sure where this room was, but that's where it was performed. So it might have been. It might have been somewhere around here, but it looks like a closet. Sharpen spoon, they go behind the eye, and they get into a certain part in the brain where the doctor knows because they're a doctor, and they spin the spoon and pop it out. And that's how people behave after a lobotomy. Maybe we can try one tonight, Con. <laughs> <laughs> Life you guys, again, these are paranormal people. They were up here. Someone was standing behind her taking pictures. The rim pod goes off. She snaps it and catches this. Whoa. What the hell is that? Spirits. And you don't see any light or anything no. here as they're taking pictures. But as soon as this rim pod goes off, these people show up and then that. And that was right here? Yeah. She was standing. Oh, shit. Right here? Yeah. yeah. Right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, so watch your head. You're tall. Okay, so like Chris said, they did have, we have a bicycle in there. Um, we have a therapy pool over here. Right here. But we've had people walk through here where your ankles get grabbed, right in this area. Yeah. The ankle grabbing ghost? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is where your doctors would be. Oh, wow. It's a white room. So they would be in here um, maybe needing to talk to one of the inmates. So they would actually open this door up. You'd have an inmate in that side. So they were able to talk to him about his issues. So I kind of the technology yeah. took place there. It's a big, big oh, deal yeah. in here. So the inmates never were allowed into this room. Yeah. Not in this one. Over okay. here, yeah. So as you see this, yeah. go ahead and walk in there. That's the pharmacy. And read the labels of what was given to the inmates. He had a lot of guys. Go ahead and tell them about this, Chris. So if you look at a lot of the medication on here, 
a lot of it is just basic medications. But as you get down in this area, you start seeing mental health meds. Hey, Depakote. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Depakote, Doxepin, Remeron. Lithium. Yeah, lithium's a big oh, one. A lot of different medications for mental health treatment right there. Zyprexa got real popular around the time that this prison closed, but Zyprexa, real big one. In the current mental health detention facilities, Zyprexa is the go-to med. And Zyprexa, for inmates that are acute, violent, attacking people, they give them Zyprexa. They also use it as a maintenance med to keep people from doing those things. So these labels were actually there? Yep. Yeah, these, this is, well, this is the actual this is labels. It. Yeah. That's wild. And they would come in little plastic, right? Baggies? Yeah, well, not baggies. They come in little uh, pinch packs things where you, the, the pill was in a pack, push on it, it goes through the foil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Like a little blister pack. Mm -hmm. Blister pack, yeah. yeah. That's right. All right, so we'll go to the, we'll go to the right. And again, here we are talking about the history, but the paranormal here, do we catch some stuff? Yeah, sometimes we do. And let me show you what we caught. These blue cells are interesting. Well, what this is, is when you have an inmate come from the cell house or somewhere, they would put them in here and they would have to wait their turn to see the CO sitting here to see the doctor. And that's how it would it work. They go in here, they know they're going to be lining up, meeting with each other. So they may schedule something months out in advance. Oh, my tooth hurts on this day. And then the inmates would line up in here and pass off stuff to each other. And they were able to use this as inmate commerce. You see that mirror right there? I do. Okay. We have these women up here and they caught right. this. Oh, that, you heard that banging? I just heard, heard that too. Happened like right in my ear. They're here. <laughs> wow. This is not anybody that was here. There were women up here, and they took a picture of that mirror, and then they looked at it and they called us up here, and I said, "Yeah, that that could be a CO. We did have a CO drop dead here with a major heart attack." We're not sure, we haven't gotten a name, but I tried to reenact the same picture with Joe, who's our CO, a retired CO, and I couldn't get the same thing. Mm -hmm. As you look in this picture, it's foggy, and this one shows everything. I could not get that. Wow. So again, that's the real deal. But again, you have mirrors bouncing off mirrors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that could be a lot more. Yep. Right? All right, we also had dentistry here. This is a huge up This here. is nothing, we, <laughs> we have more. This is an uh, area where they did dentistry, probably had gas in there, right? Where they would gas you and do some dentistry. This is an X-ray room, don't wanna go in there, it smells like X-rays. Now we're coming out of the infirmary. Let's go to the cell house. Careful of the stairs. See, I love walking around here in the dark. Well, I can, I can probably see why. <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to see, Jesus. Hi guys, we're here. It's Susan. Colin, and Connor, <laughs> Tammy, Michelle, and Chris. Michelle's here. Hi guys. Hi ladies. It's actually Corey that we got with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey Corey. <laughs> okay, so do you see these cells? Yeah. This is the inner cell. So those doors would be closed. The inmates would be able to come out and interact. On the other side, you'd have a CO. He'd be walking back and forth and making sure no problems are going on. Um, if anything was to go wrong, they would, of course, tell them, get into your cell and close the cell doors. But unfortunately, a lot of times you had a guy on a guy shanking each other. 
and we have a lot of depths in here on each floor. We have four floors. Do you know how many murders happened here? Even a ballpark idea? You know what? Don't know. Hundreds? Could be hundreds. hundreds, oh yeah. Because you have got to remember back then they kind of keep stuff hush hush. This is how an inmate would live. This is exactly how they would be set up. Go ahead and go in. <laughs> That's a dope TV. Mm -hmm. So if a CEO decided to flip that cell, he'd go in there and be able to look right into the TV or the radio and see there's nothing in there. But you see all these like spots that are gone. Mm -hmm. They would take toothpaste put it on the wall and put a picture up on it. That toothpaste it like was like glue. glue. Yeah. So, and if you look up here, they would put little cardboard up and they would hide razors underneath that stuff as well. So if you guys go in each cell, you will see this kind of stuff or they would have little hooks and hang like a sheet to keep it nice and dark in here. Also, Shanks are still alive in here. So if you're walking around, keep your eyes open. You may find one. Because I've found five since I've been doing this. In here. Five Shanks? Yeah. We left I, that's just me. <laughs> so we just leave them where we find them unless they're a real problem and then take them. But wow. the ones that we found, we've left. Where at? I mean, this block specifically? Yeah, one of them's up on the third floor right now. If you're lucky, you might find it. <laughs> it's a challenge. That's their shower. So... One by one would be able to take a shower. Now we have this side and the other side. They're the same. So this is how big this prison is. We're gonna head up to the third floor. It's like the, this is the first prison where I've actually seen like soap or shower. I know. Okay. Beware of ghosts. There's a reason why we have this. Look how long this cell quarter is. Oh, oh my God. God. Now, this is the place where I was walking and this black mass shows up on the floor and it starts crawling and then it goes up on the cell. Um, murders, a lot of murders in here. Let, let us show you. Oh, this is very active. I don't even know if you guys will get here tonight. <laughs> You'll get stuck in different places. But look at the cells. They're different colors. See the color of this one? Look at the color of this one. Right? This is incredibly long. Yep. Yeah. We don't know the name, but there was a murder here, approximately in 1981. It was a white on white, and the gentleman that was in this cell ended up bleeding out right here. So, of course, you had fights, you know, not getting along. So, was it always racial? No. It was white on white, African American Af on African American, or Native American after Native American. We get down here at the very end, you'll see something, stay there. At the very end, you'll get something popping out like this and looking at you at the end. We sat in here and we hear whistles and we believe it's a CO doing his rounds and he just whistles. You'll hear bangs, um, you'll hear boots, so there's a lot of activity on this floor and the fourth floor above us. The fourth one is exactly like this, just as long. So let's see what you get. That's, uh, that little demonstration in this game was creepy. Yeah, it is cre You know what? I was doing a ghost walk here. I had 20 people here. And I said, way down there, you usually see a guy look out back and forth and all of a sudden they're going, they're freaking out because he started doing it. And they saw it and they're not investigators, nothing. And they said, oh my God, 
what's going on? Who's down there? So we brought them all down there. Nobody was there. <laughs> wow. So it's crazy. So on this floor, I found a shank in one of these cells right in here that was not made yet. And so I was looking in the cell, I found a toothbrush that was hidden. Kind of odd, but whatever. But then I kept looking and I found the razor blade hidden in a different location. What they would do is they would get a toothbrush hot, sink the razor blade steel into it, and you got a shank in no time. Wow. So I found the parts of that shank, but not the full shank made yet, because they hadn't made it yet. Now how creepy would that be if you came back and the shank was made? Yeah, that'd be a trip. <laughs> right? I, I might have some trouble sleeping that. <laughs> okay, so we do have a ghost story. Do you want to hear it? Of course. Okay, so Tammy had a team in here, and I was the docent. So I brought her team up and around to C32. Yeah, 32. So I dropped them off, and I said, okay, guys, I'll leave you alone. So I walked by myself all the way down around, and I'm on the other side. So as I'm sitting over there, they're doing, Tammy, go ahead and tell them what you were doing. We're doing the Estes method. And the teammate that was doing it, C32, he was sitting on the toilet. And go ahead, Susan, tell the story. So I'll just kind of reenact what he was doing. Okay. So anyways, I'm on the other side. I drop them off, I go around. So here I come walk, I, I'm panicky. Cause on the other side, I hear something tell me, get out. And he is getting mad at me, but I was scared. And I don't get scared here, but this guy scared me. So I, I'm coming back and I'm walking as fast as I can. I said, you guys, you guys, can I hang here? And they're going, well, yeah, as I walked up and this guy is sitting on toilet, everybody's here, and I'm standing here, and he goes, and then he gets up real quick and gets scared because he hears this sinister laugh that we didn't hear. Oh. And, and, I, and everybody's going, why'd you call Susan a bitch, a fucking bitch? And he said, I didn't do that. And everybody put their recorders out, oh yeah, you did. <laughs> and they all played it, and he goes, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I jumped up because what was behind me. So whatever was screwing with me on the other side said, I'm a jokester. Watch what I can do. Wow. And that happens in here. Shows. Yeah. <laughs> Just a wait. A lot of activity in here. A lot of activity. In this cell specifically? In this oh, cell. Yeah. In I don't this... know why, but yeah. C32. I have to remember that. Among the 90 other places. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, well, wait till we go over here. Okay. We're going to head on to the area where we go to the death chamber. And this is going to be with me and Michelle. Did you want to show that? Oh, yeah. This, so, here we so, go. My first time I was here, just real quick, I, everybody was walking ahead of me and I was last, last and I walked by here and I didn't even see that. And something went like that. That was my first encounter. Second encounter, I'm like, I love this cell block. This is like one of my very favorite cell blocks. And I'm like, I'm gonna take a selfie. <laughs> so I took this, like that, looking up at that. And then at the very end of, down there, it's a blob and a face. Yeah, you can see the face. There's right the there. blob and then there's the face. Looks like a pile of bodies. Yeah, I thought it was like a pile of bones too. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Shot all the that is really strange. And the face. Yeah. Face. And of course there's a face too. And is it the thing that jumps out and does this peeking Could at be. us? Yeah. It's crazy. So do you guys know of any like specific um, like murders or incidents that happened like in the entire cell block? Or like a name of somebody? Well, down in where you guys were in solitary, mm -hmm. okay? The gentleman that told that guy to break out of the cell and kill somebody. His name was Bobby. He was an African American. He was just mopping the hallway and they said, I dare you to break out because they knew he could pick his lock and kill him. Now, mind you, the guy that was in the cell in solitary was in for marijuana. 
But now he decides, sure, I'll kill him. So he jumped out of the cell and he shanked him to death. His name is Bobby. And to this day, everyone gets that name Bobby. Wow. Just because someone told them you should kill him. Yeah, they didn't care. They were in here for life. Now the guy that shanked him, he was in here for a while. However, he is out. Really? Yep. Damn. We have seen him. Has he ever come back to the scene of the crime? Yes. No way. Yes. That's really funny. He came harsh. on. He came up. Don't. don't yeah. Ask. No. He came on a day tour. Yeah, and if I. Yeah, it's banging like crazy. Oh, good. Let's go. Nature bangs over here, down there. I don't know. I'd love, oh, it's locked. I would love to have you guys kind of like ask it to make some noises. Okay. You know? Oh, we're, I love we're including y'all in the... Wait until... The thing is beating the crap out of the... It's active. Exactly. Hey guys, we're coming. Now, what was I talking about? That thing? Yeah. On the other side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what was I talking about? That thing? On the other side? Yeah. Looks like it heard you guys. He's a jokester. I'll show you guys where I went. So I walked all by myself. So I walked. Now, I was down here because I knew they were across from here. And this is where I stood. And I kind of just stood here on my phone. Ooh. Those were right there. There it is. That's what I was hearing. That's the jokester. Can you do that again, please? Are you the jokester? Go ahead and bang again. Chris? Yeah. Okay, that's you. <laughs> okay, Chris, we're hearing banging here. Yeah, that's something that got thrown. Right here. Huh? Something just got thrown from over here. The rock. The rock just got rocks. thrown. What? And the yeah, person is like, look. They throw rocks. That's what was thrown. Just now? Yeah. No, just now. You I heard that. that. Okay. Yeah, he started oh, me. I heard it. Okay. Seven's here. Seven's here. And you see nothing at all. No. No. Chris, we can tell the stories about rocks, huh? Yeah. We wow. Them all the time. They just found this. This thing was thrown like that. Well, I, thought I heard somebody cars. run. That's why I went that other way. I thought I heard somebody run. And I'm always on the lookout for a person. Because no one should be here. I mean, I, I was thinking I was hearing stuff coming down from this direction. And so I looked over this way. And that's when the rock got thrown. And I heard it like. You heard it hit? Like hit yeah. the metal bars and then like roll on the like concrete. They haven't done that for a couple of years. Really? A couple of years. Yeah, it took them two years ago is the last time I know of them throwing a rock. I keep hearing like, if you're quiet for a few minutes and a few seconds, you'll hear the whole thing. That's exactly what I was hearing from the other side. Do you guys want to sit for one more second? I'd love to see This is what they do. They want you to go towards that, and all of a sudden they'll bang over there and you'll walk towards yeah. that way. Yeah, they had you going back and forth. Back and forth. And those guys were like, this with the light. Yeah, <laughs> they were back and forth. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Wait until you see the picture of oh that. Oh, wow. The funniest thing ever. Okay. Shit. No, but I was pointing at my ears. Because uh -huh. they're peaking. I get that really high pitch. And that pretty much tells me they're peaking. Yeah, I feel definitely it was, something in here. It was weird. Right when we came around the corner into this hallway, mm -hmm. I got extremely dizzy. Yes. Yeah. And that could be a portal. Yeah. It moves in here. So you can go up on the fourth floor. There is said to be a woman up there in a rocking chair. 
And I know these stories because I have inmates who contact me and tell me, hey, Susan, I have a story, and it's the God's truth. But as an inmate, they wouldn't tell other inmates because they were looked down at. He said that he would be in his cell at the end of four, and all of a sudden, a woman in a rocking chair is rocking, and then she just disappeared. What? Yeah. And that sucked to not be able to tell anybody about that. And you're trapped. Just terrified. <laughs> well, back then, you're in a man's world, right? Yeah. You get a bomb if you talk about yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. But like Joe, who's a retired CEO, he never believed in this until he started hanging out with us. And he said that, you know, we were a man's world. We didn't talk about that. We do have a name. We do. Doris. Oh, good. It was a woman's yeah. voice or like yeah. coming? Woman. 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 Her name's Doris. Yeah. That's Doris. Did you hear that? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yes. her. That was so cool. <laughs> Doris. Oh my god. <laughs> this is pretty good. Okay, just wait. This is nothing. This is nothing. Yeah. Wait till we see. Personal play. challenge. Oh my god. Walk this in the dark by yourself like I just did. It's sketch. You're a braver man than I It's yeah. scary. <laughs> I don't yeah. like I don't like doing anything alone. It is scary. I thought we were gonna split up and do a little sis. Oh we are. <laughs> that means I like doing it. Okay, you ready to hear this story? Marriage. Okay, so first of all, you want to hear about an inmate, right? Yeah. Okay, so I had another inmate contact me. Hey, Susan, I was on the B level, the third cell down on this. He said he'd be in his cell at night and he'd be laying there and he'd see a dark shadow walk by and go through this door. And that would happen every night. And he said, I don't know what it is, but we'd hear his boots. And as soon as we hear the boots, we knew he was coming. So, hmm. me and Michelle, Michelle comes with a team, and I'm showing her around. The other team's somewhere else. Yeah, it was just, it was just you and I. Yeah. We're down a level. Yeah. And so I said, oh, let's go up to the women's <laughs> to the death chamber, okay? We open the door. I have a video. I'll show you the video real quick. And then I'm going to slow it down. When we open this door, I open the door, something goes Bam! On the, the steel door. And and we're like, what the heck? Can I cuss? Yeah. Okay, what the <laughs> <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs> um, so anyways, we walk up there and um, and then we're like, do you have a flashlight? And I'm like, okay, that's not a good flashlight. Yeah, she didn't I'm like, like my that flashlight. A, that's not a flashlight. <laughs> so, um, and we, we're the only ones up yeah, here. And then it goes like this on the very top. It goes. it goes like this, like that, as we're walking up. And then I walk over and I open it, and then the door across the way in front of the death chamber, you see a crack. And as I'm filming this, it goes, it's like this. You can see it, and then it goes away. Away, and I have it right here. Oh, that was you. I was going, oh, don't no, start. <laughs> All right, here's my video. I am a paranormal investigator, and I am here at the Nevada State Prison in Carson City, Nevada. And I'm going to show you the death chamber. <laughs> Okay, now watch it open it. 
I'm going to get through the door with a crack in front of me. See it? And then it moves. So, let's do it slow-mo. Okay, so I'm coming through. He's ar it's already, I don't even know what it is, but it moves. So I'm going slow, 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 and then slow, it slow. See, my shadow's there. So it's not me or anything else. It's something behind that door. And I go slower, slower, and bam. What? It's like, yeah, that is incredibly bizarre. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what you're going to be. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, have fun. What a great All introduction. Right. <laughs> Hey guys, it's a good adrenaline rush, that's for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when when this had opened, this door had opened, and that's where that shadow was right here. What's in this room? We'll show you in a minute. Oh my God. <laughs> so if you look down this. You could be sitting in here, and you see that window down there? You'll see a shadow. Totally black out that window down there, and he'll come towards you. I call him the blob here. And I was on Paranormal Caught on Camera, and I actually have a clip of me standing in there, and I have my spirit box, and all of a sudden a green thing comes out, but this black thing comes down and peeks around at me and takes off. <laughs> and I'll pull that up for you. So this was considered the oldest part of the prison, you guys. So back in the day, they kept women in here, okay? They had women here and men on the other side. So the women couldn't be in the yard, but the women had to go up on the roof to actually exercise. But when they were kept here until 1958, and then they were moved to their own facility. There were uh, were women in here that were pregnant, that had miscarriages, women in here that raised their two children at the time. So these women, we get screams in here all the time, or a little kid. Uh, you'll hear a kid's voice too, and we believe it's from this or Warm Springs Hotel. So they would actually have their kids here? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Hey. This is so adequate. And I'm going to show you guys something. This is called a bullpen. Back in the day, a bullpen would be used for, let's say an inmate comes in late, they would throw a mattress down and put them in here until they could get them in a cell in the morning, right? Um, also, it was used for exercising. So anyways, myself, Tammy, Janice Overdeen, and Bill Overdeen, we're in here, and we decide to do a little talk with the spirits. And that's the EVP I showed you guys. And Tammy, yeah. she was in here with me. And we're setting up like cat balls and we were talking. She goes, Susan, let's record this. I said, okay. So we start the recording. We put the recorders over here, the cat balls down that way. And we're explaining to the spirits and she's saying, so touch this, this will go off and do that. And then Janice and Bill are showing up. So she goes, okay, I'm gonna quit recording. And when she said that, we got two EVPs and I'll play them. So we like to acknowledge the women. And ever since then, their activity has really picked up. Is that Chris out there? Chris? Yeah. Okay, you gotta come in here so we know it's you. I'm standing by the door. I know, but we're hearing that and we're thinking we're paranormal. So we're sitting here talking and I'll just put the pieces where you hear it's Susan or as she was picking up her recorder, she goes, this is Tammy picking my recorder. And then you hear, it's like he's standing right in front of her and says, tell Susan she can trust me. Now, we're the only girls in here except Bill, but Bill's not here yet, or Janice. Yeah, it's just me and her. It's just my life. 
Okay, here we go. So I'll play. So oh, tell Susan she could trust me. Wow. So we've been trying to communicate with whoever it is. We think we know who it is because we see him, Johnny. Right. Yeah. We spend time in the death chamber and we've gotten other voices. But also, guys, in this area, I don't know what happened in here in the killings. That was way before when they even had records of stuff going on. I'm sure a lot of bad stuff happened here, but I'm not the one to say what happened. However, I can tell you about the spirits. Michelle's got a story. <laughs> we have a story. What about the crystal ball and the footsteps? Oh, yeah. Watch this. this. <laughs> Still blows me away. I mean, you'll see me just go, I'm like frozen going, oh my God, I can't believe what I'm hearing. So you guys, we brought Janice Oberdeen in here and it was a day she called us and said, hey, I can come now. And we said, okay, let's do it. So we just came down and met with her. And let me pull this up. This is why I'm here tonight. Down there. Okay. So, I think this, here a lot. Yeah. you see that table? This is probably the most intense. We had four chairs. This one, that one, one going here. I sat with my back. Cammie was here, here, Janice and Bill. So we're talking and listen to this. Now, after you hear Janice say, did you hear that? Listen closely. As soon as I put my hand up. To right where you are, and the last step was that defiant. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. And, and you get black blobs coming in here. Um, this is where I was standing with the spirit box over here, like this. Actually, it was right here with the spirit box, and I'll pull that up and show something green come out, hit my hair, but you see it crawl down and peek around at me. Michelle, yeah. tell them your story while I look for that video. I, I, I don't have that video, remember? I know, but tell them what you were doing. Oh, okay, so we were in here, and the REM pod at the very end over here, um, C10, I always have a, get, a, get a very, very weird feeling in, in front of C10, and I always feel like it's something very powerful. Um, and. The REM pod kept beeping, you know, like when it does the temp sounds, like the beep, beep, beep sound, just that's it. Um, and I'm like, ah, oh, the battery. So I went down there to change it, and I'm coming down and I stop, and I go to reach, and I kind of look like this over my shoulder, and I could feel something, and there was a black mass above me. I have a, a colored light, a red light, and you could see it here. And I go, oh my God, oh my, oh shit, oh, like that. And <laughs> Susan comes running there and she goes, what's going on? And then I look up and I can see it just towering over her. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. It was, and she, not, she's walking this way, she goes, okay, I'm not walking. I, I, had, I had my phone like, like this. 
<laughs> I, I was scared. I get it. And I don't get scared very often. This place scares the crap out of me sometimes. Just standing here, I feel like uh, the energy. That cold just down here. I can feel. Yeah. That been like kind of hot. We just got here. So yeah. Well, and I. We also have another guy that kind of hangs out in here. You'll walk by, and it's like the worst bo ever. Oh, yeah. And we cannot explain it, but it just, yeah, we call him Mr. Smelly. So I don't know if it's the blob or what, but ooh, Mr. he's pretty Smelly. bad. Like, Mr. Smelly. I really hope I don't die if someone gives me that name. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, my name's John. I <laughs> two now. Yeah, I'll have to fight. Well, it's hard. I'm not getting anything. But another thing you'll get are women screaming. You'll hear whispering of women. Um, knocking. Um, or they'll say, let me out. Yeah, let me out. So the death row would be actually, you guys, the cell before the last night cell. Last night cell means the next step is death chamber. Okay, so come on. So this is all death row right yeah, here? Yeah, all death row. Watch your step and head. Go in there and see what these prisoners would do and look about the door. Oh, wow. Oh, holy shit. Oh, shoot. And I don't know if you could show this here. Uh, this here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like don't it. show that, but you could show that. But, um, yeah, they would be get a pencil and they would sit here and start drawing. We have calendars of them counting down the days before they die. Toothpaste in Jesus. So were there ever any like serial killers here? Oh yeah, we're gonna show you oh, that. Perfect. We'll talk. Okay, so after this guys, if you flip that and enter this room, watch your step. This is last night's cell, right here. This housed every guy out there with um, either the gas chamber or the lethal injection. This is your most famous B2 with Carol Cole, and I'll tell you his story. So people say, what's the last night sell? Well, they get any meal they want. We had a guy that ordered 20 burgers from McDonald's. One guy ordered steak and lobster. So whatever you wanted to eat for your last meal was given in these cells. Okay, let's go this way. So you would go from death row to this cell, you'd have your last meal the priest or whatever would visit you. And then they'd walk you in here. Oh shit. Follow me. <laughs> this is called the viewing room, you guys. Oh. So oh, this is shit. This it might just go. Ooh. What was that? Ooh. Wait. Oh, did you put your phone on? Oh, shit. <laughs> so I'm like, what the hell is that? Well, that Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 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 Oh, my we had a lot of activity in here last night. Wow. It was so crazy. But again, this was the viewing room, okay? So when they bring an inmate in there, they would actually have curtains down. A doctor would be in there and he would uh, give him, you know, whatever kind of injections. Um, as soon as the injections were, needles were put in, they would uh, take the curtains, put them up, and the family would be sitting here just watching that person. And then in the back room, you would have three guys to throw a switch. So no one really knew who was doing that main switch to kill the inmate. But we've had a lot of horror stories too. Carol Cole. This is Carol Cole. Carol Cole hated his name. And the reason why is because his mom told him he could be a boy or girl. Carol was a boy or girl's name. She used to dress him up in a little dress. 
and take him places, and she used to have sex with other men. As he grew older, he kept hating women. Then he ended up strangling 15 women, and he said he did 35, but we don't have that proof. However, when Carol Cole was led in that room, he was so nervous they gave him a Valium. Well, that Valium interacted with those other drugs. He had a horrible death. It took longer for him to die. He is still in there. What, what, what happened? What do you mean? It, it, well, when you put the drugs in, they pretty much slow your heart down, right? And kind of put you to sleep and then your heart is shut down. Well, when you take a Valium, it interacted with those drugs, so he was having issues like convulsions. Jeez. So he died a horrible death in there as well. We've been in here and tell him, you can go, Carol, you can go, and he says, I can't leave. So when did this switch over from being gas chamber to lethal injection? The first gas was right here. He jarred. He was actually gassed in a butcher shop after he had fallen such a horrible death again. It took over 13 minutes. Our great grandfather, Matt Penrose, saw how he died. He said, no man will ever die that long again. So he actually got the first legal gas chamber put here at NSP. He was the first one in the legal gas chamber. If you go down this whole row up to Carol Cole, these are all the guys that were gassed. Oh, shoot. Why did they stop the gassing? We have a tower over there, and the gas that was released would kind of go towards the tower, and the COs were actually getting really sick. So they decided to get rid of the gas chamber and go to lethal injection, which starts with Carol Cole. Jeez. This is the only man that was actually uh, you were asked, do you want to hang or do you want to be shot? All these guys want to be hung until they got to him. He said, I want to be shot. So he's the only man that was shot here at NSP. I would definitely choose shot. I wouldn't. Really? No. Why not? Um, the burning, when the bullets go in. Oh, I mean, and the bleeding, no. <laughs> and I, I, and why, why I say this is because I have these dreams of being shot and it burns. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't imagine going through that. Now being hung, that can go wrong too. With John Hancock, when they hung him, his vertebrae kind of separated. So he hung, but he was strangling for 15 minutes until he died. So either one, I think it's horrible to say, hmm, what do I want, hung or shot? Right. That's a hard decision, you know? I mean, this is just so many faces when you think about it. right there. Yeah, oh yeah. Now, we do have a story here, okay? Again, Tammy and I are in here sitting, and go ahead, Tammy, tell them what. Well, I decided to come up and just use the blue light, and I'm going along looking, saying the names, doing a video, just along here, then we got along here. I played back the video, Susan has it. Go ahead, do it. I don't, let's see. Let me get to where it is. And she's doing this. The John guy, Key. You hear it? I'm in the blue light. I'm, I'm here. here in the blue. So not only he acknowledges the color of the light, so it's intelligent. Here, let's play it again so you can hear it. The John guy. Key. Key John. No, Key John. I'm the only John. I hear it. What the hell? Is that great? And it was just me and her here. There were no guys here. So <laughs> this is what we're saying. When you sit here and talk to them, they will talk to you. But you've got to carry them into a conversation instead of saying, fun, fun with them. Right? I mean, we do our little comedy skits and things in here. 
and they respond. I mean, they're like, hi, hello. Yeah, her and I are sitting here, and all of a sudden something comes through the door and it goes, hello, hello, and we're both going, who is that, yeah. right? But they, what about, I mean, we get laughter, uh -huh. we'll do a joke or something, and then it's only you and I, and we get this guy that goes, ha, ha, ha. Because there is a story here, this is going back to NSP, right? <laughs> this guy. So, John Hall, and how I know these stories is because of the CEOs. He said when he was put in the gas chamber, the warden goes, John, do you have any last words? And he looked around and said, well, yeah. Does anybody have a gas mask? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's hilarious. That, that's, that's the humor this gentleman gave, you know? He, he, the, he knew he was dying, but hey, I'm going out funny. Yeah, so I don't pass that it's probably him laughing. Right, yeah, right. So who we think keeps saying, it's Susan, tell Susan she can trust me, is Indian Johnny. Indian Johnny. And for some reason, we think it's him. Uh, he always says, it's Susan, it's Susan. But let us show you these guys, too. You have David Blackwell. He's still here. David Blackwell, um, he actually shot detectives. It will tell each of their crime, but he has been seen in there, and I have a picture of him. And we put green grid lights in there, and he shows his face. But you'll get on recorders, David Blackwell, David Blackwell. This is Floyd Loveless. He was the youngest. But look what he did and he was executed at 17 years old. That is so young. Mm-hmm, and it's sad. But yeah, read this, look at this. Killed his five-month-old son, you know? I mean, these guys did deserve to get what they got. Okay, so Jesse Bishop, he was the last one gassed here. And when he was sitting in there, he told everyone, you're not gonna kill me, I'm gonna kill myself. And so as the gas came down, he was going shh, 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 shh. He was sucking it in as fast as he could so he could say, you didn't kill me, I killed myself. And that came from a CO. This gentleman, I told you guys, he's in the culinary. So he actually died or was put to death on my birthday. And that's why I think he kind of hangs around with me. It's crazy to see all the way from the 20s up to 2006. Yeah. Yep. And I'm gonna show you, I'll show you David Blackwell real right fast. So One thing oh, here's the that. other alien. Look at this. Whoa. What the <laughs> Someone's taking a picture, but look at it close up at the oh eyes. Oh my god. <laughs> so what is that? Jeez. And then this was standing behind me in the yard. Look at that body, that's my hair. I knew someone's behind me, so I took the See it? And then, oh, here it is. It's right there. Look at that. Oh. Peeking out at me. So, after visiting the death chambers, we knew it was time to start our investigation. But I do have to say, Connor and I were both really, really scared that night. There was just something in the air that evening that got us really on edge, more on edge than we usually are. And you can see it in the footage. We were freaked the hell out. But to start off, we decided to go somewhere a little bit easier, we thought, rather than way deep in the cell block. So we headed to the cafeteria where that infamous race riot occurred. And this is where the darkness really began to creep in. So it is 10 o'clock PM right now, pretty much on the dot. We are here in Nevada. What a f wonderful state. Great people that live here and great people we know that live here. And we've been waiting to do this episode for years now. So I first met Susan back in 2021 at a convention that I was at in Las Vegas. And she was telling me the stories of this prison. She was showing me some of the really graphic uh, photographs that they have of dead bodies, murder victims inside of the prison. And I knew right then that we just had to come out here and investigate. And so finally, years later, here we are doing it. And I have to admit, I'm a little on edge 
not only because of the size of this property, but it's only Connor and I tonight. Usually there's strength in threes, but we don't have that. I mean, when you think about prisons and you think about, the reason why we love these investigations is because they're always so goddamn active. There's just something within these walls that wants to talk. We already were hearing the banging, humming, uh, seeing all these videos that Susan and everybody has recorded. And they were just in the death chamber actually opening up the door to it for us. And they said, it is active and they're gonna come out tonight. So for people who are experienced with this place to say that there's something really there tonight, I'm like, holy shit, but. Connor? Another prison, guys. Uh, uh -huh. No felonies, but we still made it in. Yeah. Uh, like always, with these locations where there's so many people that went in and out of this place and so many people that died in this place, there's a lot of energy that's attached to this. But not just people. I mean, there's been supposed alien sightings. Yeah, right there. Skinwalkers. What the hell? <laughs> Honestly. Uh, I think we're definitely in for a treat tonight. We're already hearing lots of activity. So yeah, last thing I'll say, this, you guys have to remember, this was a notoriously violent prison. The number of inmates that were murdered here, um, the historic gang wars that were going on within the boundaries of this prison. We didn't really cover that in the tour, but like the Aryan Brotherhood, racist uh, organizations that operate in prison. Aryan Brotherhood is a white supremacist gang. They were just murdering black people left and right here. And then the black people were murdering Aryan Brotherhood members. So those are the photos that we've taken a look at today that are showing graphic people. This one guy, a story that we didn't even cover on the tour, he was a prisoner in a building that we don't have access to tonight because of a spider infestation, as if this place couldn't get scarier. When he would catch an inmate, like a fellow inmate messing up, or as they described it, slipping up, he would rape them. And after a while, other inmates kind of got together, and when they saw this guy slipping, and they caught him slipping, they then stabbed him many, many times in the groin directly into the private part, if you know what I mean. And he died from that injury. And there's photos of that that we have seen that you cannot unsee. They are very, very graphic. We're starting out. You wanna follow me, brother? We are starting out in culinary. Now remember, this is what they said. It's one of the most active areas here in the prison. Just look at this. I mean, you can't really it's it's dark it, but <laughs> We have this entire prison right now to ourselves. It's just Connor and I. This building itself, this small building, would usually be big enough to film the whole episode. And this is just the, the intro to the investigation where one of those race riots happened. Okay, well, we are going to set our stuff up and get right back. It's literally got like a pattern to it. What the hell? Okay. To anyone who might be here tonight with us, here at the prison, we just want to introduce ourselves. We come with good intentions. We just want to chat, hang out. Um, my name is Colin. My name is Connor. So, first, we have all these little toys set up around the room. If you could just like go up to any of the lights that you see, touch them, or make a knock like this. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, that was great. They're standing right here. Can you touch that thing again? Thank you. Yeah. That's exactly what we want, man. We're just wanting to hang out today. Shoot the shit. So you touch, you touch this one right here. Thank you for that. And this one right here. Thank you for that. Can you touch this one up here? Or the one by the table back there? Spirit 
Dude, it's just getting stronger by the second. Oh my god, look at that! It. Someone's right here, dude. Did you used to work here in the kitchen? If you did, could you step away from that light? Okay, thank you. This is already getting weird, man. I'm in my 60s. Okay, you're in your 60s? Were you a cook? Or why are you back here in this area? Right! 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 So, you were a cook. So, thank you, sir, for coming and talking to us. Or, could be ma'am. Be man, right? I don't know. Um, could you tell us your name, whoever you are? Seems like you were a cook who worked here in the kitchen. Black. Black. Black is kind of really bizarre, dude. There was a race riot. And yes, and there were two black men that were stabbed to death. Literally, Connor, their bodies were right there. Were you murdered in here? I'm really curious. Um, can you make a noise or like run towards us or something like this? Do you want us to find a list of the cooks who worked here? Or what list are you talking about? What if you knock? to let us know where you are. Could you tap like that again if you're over there? Frank, you were a cook here, Frank? Ten spirits. Remember she said there was like ten dudes stabbing the people? Maybe this is a sp Did you hear that? Growl. The woman scares me. 
Where's the woman at? So the woman's back over there. You want us to come into the kitchen? Is that the woman that scares you over there? Location. <laughs> not if it's that alien. I don't want to f***ing be kidding me. I don't want to see alien. So walk over there and it's like signs. Are we gonna be okay if we walk into the kitchen area? I know it says cooks only over there. If you don't want us to come in there, can you make a loud noise? Do you hear that? Can you show us what you look like? Ten times 
today. Like something has gone behind me and gone like that. Fucking like that. I didn't want to say anything during the interview. So. I am upset. What are you upset about? I don't want to scare you. You won't scare us. Like we said, we're just trying to hang out tonight. Come bullshit with you guys. I think at this point we've made contact with it. It wants to talk. So, I say we go sit at that table, listen. Wrong. Listen, and then, um, do a spirit box there. Yeah. Fine. Wait. I'm show you something that's gonna just blow you away. Well, hold on, man. <laughs> Repeat exactly what you just said to us. Um, I don't want to sh- I mean, I don't care if I show it. It's up to you. This is what you do. Melty. All right, so, so we, we, we were- So we have to ground Susan and Tammy, because they got, you want, you want to tell them? Uh, they, they were very, acting very bizarre when they were in the death chamber. And so I had to take them both out and cleanse them and ground them. Um, but the thing is, is- The others mean harm. It's. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, it gets worse. It does. Um, I didn't ground myself, and I didn't. I didn't um, get grounded either. No, and I walk. Okay, I have a video, and I'm gonna show it to you. It's creepy. It's not my face. Something morphed in front of me, and when I walked in, I opened it, and it was in slow motion, and I turned around, and I was smiling. And it wasn't my face. It was dead body face. Dead body face. Wait, what? Explain that. You're gonna see it. It's a trip, dude. I don't want to show this, but I'm going to because the thing is, is people need to learn to ground themselves and always shield themselves mm -hmm. before they. Yeah. And I don't. I didn't this time. Now watch. This is my. Watch my face. Equal. Um, what? It, it really does not look like you. At so all. when they came out, Susan was so messed up, I had to hold her so she wouldn't fall, and she was complaining she couldn't feel her feet. She was sick, and she was swaying like seven, eight Did inches. Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a little creepy. So if you guys go up there, I mean... I would be protected somehow. Yeah. We went inside yeah. and we've never done that since we've been here. And as I've soon as I walked much. in after that, I was like, oh God, I don't want to be in here. And I walked out and I was fine. But then Tammy was acting bizarre in there. Tammy's and... never been in there and they know that. Yeah. And, and they Susan. got on Tammy. But we just wanted to let you... We thought you were up there. We had to go up and see if yeah. you guys were okay because it's... No, oh, we're making it. We're going to be up there eventually. So you're gonna I think that's where we're going to end. Tonight. Please, yeah. please be careful. I mean, I don't care if you use that footage because that's we not me. We exercise you. We exercise oh, you. Yeah, you did. Okay, that's like Thank really you. bizarrely relevant. <laughs> like, what <laughs> the hell? That's <laughs> crazy because, I mean, y'all were talking about up there, like, I mean, at least Tammy and Susan talk about how they always have a good time in there. Oh yeah, no, not this time. Inside I... of the execution chamber, yes, it's different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but then she was energies in there that have been put to death, yeah. and it's so sealed up and everything yeah. all the time that they're stuck there. So I mean, we walk in there and they're like, "This is oh. great." Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> but I mean, it's also crazy because she was she was just telling us about how when Kalani was in there, he he's, got angry. He started getting like really, really angry out of nowhere. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is that. Yeah. It's like the words restaurant, a bunch of stuff, but then it starts Perfect. saying 
she's she scares me, and then we're like, where are you? And it's like she's coming, and yeah. then maybe huge that's me bang over there. Nice. Could have been. Oh, yeah. It's me coming. I scare them. Jeez. You know, when it's weird that you were come. Check on right? us. <laughs> she's coming right now. When I was holding your shoulder or your whatever, I thought I was holding on to Susan. I didn't realize that was you until you So I grounded Susan and, you know, I did what I had to do, push away all the bad energy and give her my energy yeah. and have her pull light up from the ground and surround her body. And as I was going up her body, she felt my energy on her face and then I went over her head like that and her hair went in the air. You wow. feel me? Not You've not only in the front, it was doing it in the back where I was at. That's crazy. So her hair was coming out in the back. Yeah, <laughs> we missed a lot. <laughs> no, yeah, seriously. We've gone like 30 minutes. <laughs> well, we have grounded those two. We haven't grounded yet. I grounded. Did you? I haven't yet. I'll help you. <laughs> yeah, but you guys done. just be careful yeah, up there, please. If you feel any, t or if you see that you each other are not acting yeah. right, get each other out of, get that person out. That was the key with Tammy. Tammy stopped acting right. She like literally stopped acting right. And then all of a sudden she's like. And I had to go in there. And, and lay down. Out. And we're like, what are you, why are you laying down like that? Like, yeah, why is your head weird. down all weird? She wasn't like laying on the bed. She was sitting there. Her head flopped over. So weird. we just wanted wow. to warn you guys. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Thank you for the warning. Yeah. You're <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want anyone to get hurt. We have had to carry people out of here. That's Luckily, the one guy that we had to carry, he's a small Asian police officer in San Francisco. His name's Paul. Really great guy. He got beat to crap. Like really? literally beat to shit. We had to carry him out of here. And I can't carry you. So do you guys think, like, because we've opened up the chambers, that it might be just like we're dealing with different entities? entities? We're so they're not different, them. they're different acting. Yeah. They've always been here. Yeah. But now they're like, imagine if you're cooped up in your house all day, you're a little kid, you want to go play? That's them. Jesus. Now they're out to play, because guess what? We didn't close it. It's still open. It's open. So if you need us, you've got Susan's number. <laughs> Text her, please, and right. we'll be you right. You got up. my number too. If you guys yeah. get in let us know where you. you're at, okay? Yeah, of course. I'll come get you. All right, guys. Wow, screaming. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't bring the card. You might have to wheel me out. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Right. I can fix the bolt on that. You can only fire carry one person. Did they? Did I just die? I just replaced this battery. That was me. Thank you guys. What the fuck? <laughs> that is fucking crazy though. Energy. I mean. Wait. What the hell was that noise? Okay, so basically, to fill you guys in on what just happened. Those two just walked in here completely randomly to warn us. Yeah. To warn us that there's something dark here. Hey. This... <sighs> there's something dark here that they, they've never really felt here in the prison. We're not making this up. Mm -hmm. But I'm not kidding you, dude. Hello? <laughs> it seems like every fucking time that we do these big locations. Watch what I do. Every time the owners tell us. Oh, it's never been this dark. It's different. I'm like, what the f is wrong? Something. What's up? In, like, what's going on recently? I don't know. It's just darkness, man. What the f are you? Am I going crazy? Dude, something's about to happen, bro. Mark me. Mark my words. All of my hair is standing.
Hello? Can you do that again? Who is that? Holly. Can you please say your name out loud for us? Others are scared. They're very scared. The others, we're not. We're still here. Yeah, you did it. Whoever you are, the dark thing. Obviously, you're just a human. I know you scared the others, but you're gonna try. Have to try a little harder to scare us. Okay, whoever just came in here, we're just here to talk to you. Yes, I'm here. Is this who was messing with Susan and Tammy? Who are you? You see us. No, I don't. If you're here with us, will you just show us what you look like real fast? Lock. Locked up. Or the doors, a bunch of the doors are locked here. What do you look like? Okay, we're gonna turn on one of our toys. Electric. How did that die? Electric. 
but we're going to turn on this radio and I think we, it should help us be able to hear your voice. But it's going to be loud. If you want to make one more noise for us, can you do it? Maybe respond to this. I've been here 150 years. Okay, we're gonna turn this thing on, all right? You know, it was about 150 years ago. The hotel. Oh, that's true. Do you like Satan? I've never seen an ass that before. Hell yeah! <laughs> Dude, how fing weird is that though? It said, holy. What the hell? What? I swear to God, I just saw a red blinking light over there. Did you have a red blinking light? No, like on the ceiling. That was fing trippy. But, holy, the church, Satan, seems like this person themselves is religious. Right when we turn the device on, Connor, both of our f lights are dead. Do we have another battery? F Follow us, right. Dude, I'm actually like, there's something bad here. I do not feel a normal, I mean, even for prison, Missouri Penitentiary was creepy, but it's creepy. Like this. this is fucking like, dude. Protection. Protection. It's like this thing is begging. Resemble. Them. She's saying it was like something morphed. seems like this thing that's whoever this person is that we're talking to isn't the bad thing. But it's like it's saying, holy, the church, like things saying like you should use God as protection against this dark thing. It's fucking warning us. But who's she? And the fact 
fact that these noises have just kept getting closer. People won't be able to tell online, but they started off far I down. made noises. just got touched. I'm not kidding you. Are you messing with us? What's your problem? Why are you switching up on people tonight? Something's touched me twice. I don't know if you might have caught this, but I literally felt a touch and I looked down at my hair and I watched my hairs move. Like just now, it happened on both arms. All right, if we go to the cell block, are you gonna follow us there? She likes you. Dude, I have goosebumps. Every hair on my body is on edge. But now I'm trying to think, should we go to the... The woman's? Yeah, I think so. Is she here with us right now? Dude, I'm kidding, Connor, I'm kidding. I, dude, I have never experienced this before. Yeah, you can touch my arm. Can you touch it? I'm actually like, Look at my goosebumps. Something is actually rubbing. Oh my god, this is really f***ing bizarre, dude. Thank you, can you touch my arm one more time? Dude. People online are gonna think I'm fucking mental, but I swear to God, this entire time that we've been sitting here, it has felt like someone has been going like this. Right. Like this. Like over, and I'm not, I'm literally not fucking around. I mean, I got just bumps. But I could, it was like, dude, it was straight up. It is thick in here, dude. Holy f I'm like I feel really like eating a drain, like all my fucking hairs are standing on end. Okay, we're gonna go to another part of the prison. This is your last chance to use your voice and tell us something about yourself. It seemed in the kitchen that there was something just lurking around right behind us, breathing down our necks. I mean, 
It was right there. It was tangible. We could feel it. But we didn't know how worse it was going to get. And it got so much worse. So we knew something had changed while we were investigating in the cafeteria. It seemed like somebody, a woman, something evil had almost entered the building that wasn't there at the start of our investigation. And when the tour guides and everybody came and paid us a visit, we understood that it was because they opened the death chamber door. Now they never do this. They, I think they've only done it for two or three people ever. And so they were all, you know, everybody there, Susan, everybody was very cautious about opening the door. We had to kind of coax them into actually opening it for us. And you could feel it. It was like a nuclear bomb went off in the prison and it changed everything. It changed the environment. It changed how we felt. And I th it might have been a mistake. It was good for evidence, really good for evidence. But for what happens to me at the end of the video, I think it, it was definitely a mistake. But we were so scared of what was happening. I mean, you could see it in the footage once again that we actually had to have Susan and the other guys that were there with us escort us from the cafeteria up to the woman's cell block because we were so freaked out about being in that building. It was just like somebody was up on you at all times, trying to get at you, trying to attack you. And I'm really glad they did bring us up there. But when they left, we started to capture some of the most intelligent and violent paranormal activity we've ever caught on camera. Okay guys, so we are up in the women's cell block and Connor and I are not alone. We had to have these guys walk us up here because uh, we're just really anxious. There's just something, it's hard to explain how we are feeling, but it's just like really on edge. And I want you guys to kind of explain what happened to y'all. Well, we unlocked the depth chamber and Hear that? Yeah, that was Hi, ladies. Hello. Now it's happening behind us. That was loud, loud at the very end. Okay, see, it, once we start talking about something, they start getting our attention, you guys. So the death chamber we opened up, we have video of her changing. She was morphing into something and black eyeliner came on her eyes. I went in there, Tammy went in there. When we came out, I was a whole different person. And so was Tammy. And thank God that he noticed it because he helped her, Michelle, pull whatever was in me and Michelle out of us. And it was heavy. I don't remember a lot. All I remember is I want to go sleep. And thank God for Michelle. It, this has never happened to me. So opening that death chamber, it has brought something out here, dark. But you guys definitely feel like- 100% better. But I mean, that was like, you don't open the door very often, right? Never. never. Yeah, we've never been in. No, never. Well, I have, but you haven't. But yeah, I had someone here last week, but I never went in. But I went in. And when I came out and sat in the viewing area, I was like enjoying watching her sit in there. I, it, it was just weird. And then she pulled her out there. I'm like, no, she needs to get out. And we all got out. I went to my office and he said I threw my shoes off. I don't remember doing this. And all I remember is I don't feel good, I need help. And I said, where's Michelle? Mm -hmm. We went and got Michelle, carted her outside, she needed to be escorted. And she was teetering. She had a good seven to eight inch sway back and forth. Jesus. Yeah, I, I felt remember. fine. I mean, I felt fine. I just felt like I needed to connect. Hence the reason why I put my head down on the bed. And I don't know, it was just so weird. That connection I had, I felt I had to have with them. But. Hmm. Yeah. Well, interestingly, <laughs> I think what? what we need to add too is when we came and like just talked to you guys just now, we were hearing stuff in the like safe room area, like in that entry area, banging, kind of shuffling. So it's like whatever it's here is like following us around the damn building. Yeah, correct. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and y'all thought you guys heard 
me and Colin talking. Oh, yeah. yes. Inside the, the and we front were, room. You guys were not there. You're we still in the home area. Well, we I, was, I was by myself just grabbing a soda and they thought I was talking to you all. Yeah. <laughs> so we're sitting in the theater room and we're both going, who is that? Why are they coming back? Do you hear them? And it's you guys are carrying the conversation. conversation. It was a full on like conversation. You guys are yeah. And so Chris walks in and we said, are you talking to the guys? He goes, I wasn't even talking. Nobody's out here. <laughs> yeah. Right? But that's one but thing they do is they mimic, mimic. They mimic yes. our voices a lot. Yeah. That is the scariest thing to me is mimic. Oh, stuff. Yeah. Also, yeah. after you two had came and warned us about what happened, you left. And then it was like 10 minutes after that. I started thinking I was hearing y'all talking again. I was like, oh, they're, yeah. they're coming back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're yeah. making you and I now. Yeah. Which is very new. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So I guess, well, have fun. You'll have fun in here. <laughs> By the way, the death the chamber is open, so whatever's in and out of there might come visit you. I'm thinking that's probably what's going to happen. Good. <laughs> Just let us know when we can come up and lock it back down. Okay. Because yeah. we want to close it. If you hear a lot of screaming, Oh yeah. Please run, run in. Okay. We will. <laughs> we'll be outside waiting All for right. the yeah, lights. Alright, get the lightsabers out. <laughs> Alright guys, good luck. What the f***, man? Okay, thank you. Can you step out of the hallway so that that thing will stop making noise? Okay, guys. So, to explain... Okay, to explain what's happening right now, we just set up on the third floor. This is the women's ward, or the women's cell block. I, right when I just was about to start recording, I got on the statics. There was a huge thump, and then I heard a hmm noise, and then massive loud banging at the end of the hallway, and and immediately, for the first time tonight, the music box started going off like something actually walked down here. And then the REM pod right here. One of us has got to turn that off. Let's do rock, paper, scissors. Two out of three. I set it up. This is funny. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Go get them all. Okay. To anybody who might be up here, specifically to the women who were here who were imprisoned, I think there's one woman, I think there's one woman in particular who has followed us around a bit tonight. Some people seem to be afraid of you, but we were also told that you really like us, so. Whoever this dangerous woman is, we're inviting you to come forward and speak with us as well. Um, we'd love to hear you make some noise in your cell, let us know where you are. 
Just to reintroduce ourselves, my name is Colin. My name is Connor. So, if you're here with us, could you make some sort of a noise? Is this the woman we were speaking to earlier? By the way, to people online, there is no wind tonight. It is completely dead air. There are no fucking animals in here. This is a sealed, and you can see they've kept this property in really good condition. Injection. What the f Injected? Never gotten that word once. Wasn't, wasn't he the first person who got the injection here? Keep going. You okay? I feel like rough as fuck right now. I mean... <laughs> Can you whistle back to me? I see the lights. Guilty. Can you come down here? Hear me. Dude, what the fuck? Oh my god. 
Okay, guys, I'm gonna admit right now, this has gotta be... It's getting closer, bro. It's fucking, oh my god. This is one of the most freaky... Oh my god, I didn't even notice my necklace. This has got to be honestly one of the freakiest energies I've felt in a really f***ing long time. They killed me. Okay. Oh my god, guys. So we're... You just heard them explain they opened up the door to the death chamber and something extremely evil came out. That dark thing affected them. That's what's been following us. And they said, we're, we're literally like 20 feet, or like 100 feet from the no, death. Not even that. It's on the other side of this wall. <laughs> Sound really quiet. Yeah, the death chamber is literally right around the corner. It said, injected, guilty, they killed me. I mean, I don't think it would be any more clear that this is a spirit... Bertram. Bertram. We screenshot that. This is the spirit of a man who was killed by lethal injection. I'm like almost to the point of wanting to f quit. That's the... That's the thing that's like... It's... I mean, I know you guys are gonna see this video and be like, oh, they're definitely scared. But there's a big difference between being scared, like Garnett, we were scared. Because it was like, almost like jump scare things. This is like creeping me the f out. To the point where like, I feel so uncomfortable. Like, this is making my like, skin crawl. Also, I feel like if you, if you are out there and you've done paranormal investigations, I know a lot of you watchers and people who've subscribed Ghost Hunt, and you'll agree, you can f***ing feel when something is evil. This is evil. The other thing that keeps running through my mind that concerns me, if this thing had the force to fully twist a metal spoon, they were saying before, a police officer who visited, I think they said this, It said that they told us that this thing beat the shit out of a police officer and they had to actually carry him out of the building. This spirit punched him and bruised this guy's body. I'm like, what the f*** could this thing do to us, dude? Were you executed here? Did they put you to death in this building? Why are you so angry tonight? Mm -hmm. 
We're not going to leave yet. We're just here to hang out. We're bringing good, positive energy. So why don't you join us um, and help us spread some positivity? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to fucking say. <laughs> I think that sounded lame, but... I really would like it for it to be positive right now. Why can't we ever do a happy holiday? Where are the good ghosts? Are there any ladies here? James. Oh my god. Dude, what the f car? It's fucking and you know what's crazy? Is usually on contracts that we sign for like locations, I'll just like print my name Connor. But this one I did James. No. That's what it looks like. Dude, that was right here. Are you trying to talk to me? My name's James. I mean, my mind is actually blown by this video. This is like, I think the most poltergeist activity we may have ever seen. I mean, how, ma how many noises and you can't explain any of them. I'm fucking completely 100% dead serious about this, guys. I know people have said, oh, you title everything scariest, creepiest, most haunted, I'm like, Genuinely, I think as we've grown older, our abilities have opened up, all of our experiences have been becoming more and more powerful. And like, right now, this is the scariest prison out of all of them that we've investigated. This right. is scarier than Brushy, right? This is scarier than Brushy, this is scarier than Missouri, this is scarier than Montana. You know what I'll say though, that I'm really worried about, is that all these places that we've been filming at, everybody, like, people are saying, like, oh, like, the energy's usually not that bad here. And we show up, and something f happens. And so I'm like, is it us? Yeah. Okay, we're about to use a little voice recorder. Before we do that, could you make a really loud noise again, bang on your cell door to let us know that you're here and ready to talk? Maybe we thought the woman was scary and that's who was there. But maybe the whole time, the evil thing that came in was the evil person who was executed and they're scared of the women because they can protect us. Well, I mean, also, if you go and look at all the people that were executed, a good majority of them killed women. Yeah. The one guy strangled 12 women. Why don't you use your voice and answer our question? Door. They open the door. Whistle. Whistle. They open the gas chamber, this execution death chamber door, and that's the start of the evil tonight. Okay, Can you try to use your voice and just tell us your name? Is 
Is there someone trying to hurt people tonight? Why are you stuck in that one prison cell down there? Sad. Are you trying to protect us? Where are you from? Are you mad that they opened the door? Did you have any children? I felt like this, but I'm feeling like sick right now. Like I have like Me. the flu or something. Like horrible. Like straight up. Like I'm like it's like really hot in here all of a sudden. I just feel like I could pass out. <clears throat> I feel like I could throw up. <laughs> dude, I'm not with you at all. No, you, you're like sweating. I know, look at you. I, like, I feel like nauseous all of a sudden. Like I have body aches. It's only 50 degrees outside. Like it's not sure hot. Weather. You can kind of see it there. It's very, it's very cool, cool outside right now. You okay? You need to take a breather. Now I'm feeling fucking rough too, dude. You're like sweating like you're about to throw up. I'm, you can't even see it, but I'm like, is it fucking just me or is it like really hot in here? You don't think so? Dude, I'm like fucking like burning up. You wanna go outside for a little bit? Okay guys, so I would take a break right now and go sit outside, but God. But Susan just texted me and said that they're gonna be locking up the prison soon. So, f we're just gonna head over to the, to the death chamber to do our Estes method. I straight up feel like I could, dude, I'm, I, you can't even see on here. I'm fucking sweating like a motherfucker and it is fucking 50 degrees outside. And I'm like, I feel like I could throw up. We haven't eaten. Like, I know we say this a lot, uh, 
with places being the scariest places, but I mean, this place was definitely one of the scariest places I've ever been to. I mean, a lot of the spirits you're coming into contact with are spirits of uh, murderers, uh, dangerous people. And so, and there were just so many loud noises, bangs, the spirit talker was just spitting out accurate information. I mean, lethal injection stuff. Uh, there's no explanation for it, other than we were talking to the prisoners. I don't. I can't remember the last time I've been this on edge in an investigation. It would have to be the Garnet House, which we recently released. Um, Connor and I were sweating bullets. We were saying, I don't know how long I can actually stay in here. Um, this thing like wants us. It wants to attack us. It wants to hurt us. Like this thing was really, really on us at all times, and that's when. I mean, we probably shouldn't have done this, but that's when we decided we needed to do the Estus. Now, with the Estus, once again, you're calling out to anything to come speak with you. And we went to do it in the death chamber, right next to a bed where over 40, I can't remember, 50 people were put to death. It's the original bed, pillow, everything. So just watch this footage. It's really disturbing footage. It doesn't even look like me. I personally don't remember anything that happens next, but... Yeah, this is this is where it gets f Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And this week to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video, let's smash that like button and comment that place is spooky in the comments section below. I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So go comment. You can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. Okay, guys. So as you can see in this episode, we've been given very special privileged access to be able to investigate the actual goddamn death chamber. This is where over 50 murderers and hardcore criminals were put to death. And what's even more eerie about all this is this is the original mattress, these are the original straps, and this is the original pillow that these people died on. I mean, you can't get more hardcore than that, I don't think. We can't actually lay on the bed or do anything like that because this is a museum piece. And, God, dude. I gotta say, it feels evil in here. Dude, I have a headache in here, man. I'm like <clears throat> getting sicker. <coughs> sicker by the second in here, but I do wanna I wanna get some answers, but I'm like, I feel so like, just stomach, like gaggy, like I'm fucking, God, I feel horrible. Okay, man, let's do this. What was that? All right. Leave. It's me again. Connor, or James. I did nothing. I want to know what... I cleaned up. What's going on tonight? What made you switch up? You better... You... Flashing news. So what happened? Why are you so mad tonight? Our win. Can you tell me who this is? Oh, do you see me? There's somebody walking outside. Ha ha ha. Tell me a joke. You didn't like when the girls were in here earlier. What happened? Yes, I. 
Yes, I did. You did like when the girls were in here? Sexual battery. Is that what they killed you for? What the? Dude, I'm feeling f***ing like a hand around the back of my neck. My palms. <laughs> What's your name? I've been up all night. I killed more than 11. Jesus. The number. So was it you that was making the girls feel bad earlier? Susan and Tammy? I don't like you. Why don't you like me? What did I do? F you. I feel f weird, dude. This doesn't feel right. <laughs> What's your problem? I just came to hang out. Humanity. Too much. I'm just here. Bitch wife. <laughs> Can you tell me what happened to you? One thousand deaths ahead. The Oracle. You don't have a choice. I'm already inside. Inside of what? <laughs> Did they let you out today? I'll burn your Bible. Can you feel me playing? Yeah, I can. Feels pretty heavy in here. Hits to the chest. Can you tell me when you died? The mountains. Why are you alive? I don't know, that's a hard question. Can you tell me how long you were here for? There's somebody moving shit around outside. I own you now. No, Twelve. You don't. you don't own me. I'm protected. I'm taking over control. No, you're not. Your films suck. That's not nice. Jump off a cliff. I want to know what switched up today. Are you Charles. mad that they opened the door? Give me lithium, please. James. Yep, that's me. Can you answer my questions? <clears throat> Florida and Georgia. If there's one thing I'll say. Say it. I'm here to listen. I hope you suffer. Why? What did I do to you? Need victims. Are you just evil? You also you'll get to suck you'll get to suck God's nipple earlier. What the f <laughs> Stupid. 
stupid bitch. I just want to know why you're so angry today. We came here with good intentions. Robbing. We came here with good intentions. We just wanted to talk and hang out and joke around like we usually do. But today you decided to get angry and take over Susan. Why'd you do that? Are you trying to affect Fallen right now? No f***ing way. No f***ing way. <laughs> Did you just turn off my light? see all my hairs on end that nausea came back like a wave just now I feel like this is I'm like I feel like there's something this is getting too much is there anything it's else you have to say I don't care about you your friends your life all right well, we're gonna get going then Ooh. Dude. Let me get out of here. Why? You started f***ing acting funny. Huh? You started acting funny. You started like twitching and shit. I'm like doing weird things with your mouth. And it killed my battery. The camera battery's about to die. We need to go. Yeah. Dude, I feel really I do too, dude. And you haven't heard all the shit that's going on out here. Alright, I'm cutting. As this SS method went on, this was one of the most unsafe I've ever felt during an SS method. I mean, I saw something come over Colin. Uh, I had never seen him act like that before. And then all the, like, just terrible things that they were saying in the SS method. I was actually, like, scared for our lives, and I didn't want to be there anymore. This place is definitely one of the scariest places you can ever go to for paranormal activity. I don't know if I want to go back, but I guarantee that we will end up going back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <fuck that. laughs> nope. Okay. So after the Estes, I felt nauseous. I felt like I was going to throw up in the prison. I actually told Connor, I need to get outside now because I feel like I'm going to throw up. We hadn't eaten anything weird all day. Connor felt fine. I was sweaty. I was getting so overwhelmed. It was like in me. Um, and you can see in the footage, my jaw starts dropping, like I stop really giving answers, my voice sounds different. I, that's the craziest Estes session that I've ever done because of how I felt. And the fucked up part is, I don't remember any of that. I told Connor immediately, I don't remember what just happened. We had to take a break before we went and got our equipment. That was, yeah, it, it really changed my mind and my opinion on how all of this works and how dangerous it can be sometimes. But. Speaking of all of that, one of the people that was with us that night actually did an energy cleansing on me immediately afterwards, and it was really, really crazy. She had me visualize a ball of white light going all around my body while she was moving her hands, and I felt like I could feel it. It was going up my legs, up my arms. I got goosebumps. In the middle of it, I started crying. 
Connor and I said oh, we should have filmed that to show you guys but it was this was like something that I needed and while she was doing this energy cleansing on me I kept seeing this flash of what looked like Nosferatu mixed with Marilyn Manson this evil demon like creature staring at me and that was haunting because I was visualizing this white light and it was like a photograph kept flashing in my eyes I don't know if that was around me or if she was trying to cleanse it and it wouldn't let go I don't really know but I do have to say in Nevada State Prison is the scariest prison we've ever been to um, hard to beat places like Brushy and Missouri State Penitentiary but holy shit was that absolutely terrifying and I know Susan wants us to come back and do some events there but I'm afraid to step foot on that property again because of how intense that night was but yeah, I guess that's what we want in the paranormal, but sometimes uh, that's what you get and it's a little too much. But from here in Houston, Texas, I love you guys so much, Connor and I both do. Um, thank you for watching and as always everybody, see you next week and stay spooky. Hello! <laughs>